Thank you everyone for joining us. Welcome to today's CNCF live webinar, Breaking Tradition, the Future of Package Management with Kubernetes. I'm Libby Schultz and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm gonna read our code of conduct and then hand things over to Dimitri Kalanen, engineer at VMware. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to speak as an attendee. There is a Q&A box on, in the chat uh on the right hand side of the screen so just drop any of your questions in the chat and we'll get to as many as we can this is an official webinar of the cncf and as such is subject to the cncf code of conduct please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct and please be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page <clears throat> at community.cncf.io under online programs. They are also available via your registration link you use to sign in and the recording will be on our online programs YouTube playlist as well. With that, I will hand things over to Dimitri. So take it away. Hey folks. Um... Feels a little weird without all the little Zoom boxes of seeing everyone else, um, but uh, that's uh, that I guess we'll do for now. Um, well, thank you, for, uh, or maybe later viewing this uh, this talk. Um, I'm Dmitri. Uh, I work at uh, VMware uh, in the MapBU um, unit. Um, mostly working on Kubernetes, but uh, I, I, I do have uh, quite a uh, interesting background, you know, coming from Cloud Foundry uh, and, you know, before that working on various uh, uh, consulting projects with Pivotal. Um, so today um, we really want to talk about Kubernetes package management with Carvel and specifically one of the Carvel's project called Cap Controller. Uh, Carvel is an OSS project uh, sponsored by VMware. Um, it was born uh, probably around two years ago, maybe. Um, it's actually a, a toolkit um, of, of various uh, Kubernetes-related tools. Now, some of those tools are generic. They're not necessarily specifically written for Kubernetes, but they work well with Kubernetes. And some of those tools are obviously very much Kubernetes-specific. So. We have a little uh, site there, carvel.dev, that actually lists out all of the tools. And we are also talking about revamping that stuff to make it a little bit more um, new user friendly. Um, so tell us what you think when you visit the website. Uh, here's a Slack, uh, pound carvel uh, on the Kubernetes Slack instance. Uh, we're very active there. We actually recently reached a thousand uh, members uh, really excited for me seeing kind of a community grow over time. Um, and, uh, you know, we welcome anybody to drop in, uh, chat with us on Carvel related questions, or maybe even just how you use Kubernetes. Uh, we're always eager to learn, uh, you know, what you all are doing. Um, so one thing that you might have seen from recent KubeCon uh, is a talk uh, by one of my colleagues, Shatarupa. Uh, there was a keynote called Breaking Tradition, the future of package management with Kubernetes. Uh, there's going to be a link that you can uh, click in the slides and uh, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. Uh, the talk kind of talked about um, what we have been up to uh, within Carvel community uh, and, you know, what are some of our, you know, desires and visions for package management. Um, so it actually serves like a, a good background maybe for this talk. Now, this talk uh, is maybe more of a continuation uh, to kind of dive in a little bit deeper into the details. Uh, and I actually love doing a lot of demos. So uh, we'll be doing a lot of live demos. Hopefully things go, go well. But if they go wrong, that's actually more fun than usual. Um, all right. So one of the slides uh, from that talk um, was uh, this uh, this specific slide? Um, it was calling out declarative Kubernetes APIs, immutable bundles, uh, distributor of OCI registries, and, and really picking the right tool for the job, right? Um, and when I say the right tool for the job, what I mean is being at the abstraction level that your problem uh, deserves, right? 
Um, so most users, right, don't necessarily have the same exact problem. It's similar problems or, or, or it's really kind of a stacked up in different ways. And so uh, at least from my experience, uh, I think it's important to find the tool that actually solves your problem and doesn't actually do too much extra. Because if it does do too much extra, then you know, you're dealing with all the extra complexity. Uh, or maybe vice versa, right? You you found a tool that does bare minimum, but it's not quite enough for your uh, for your problem. Um, one of the actually other things that uh, we'll we'll touch on is 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 using OCI registry as a storage system. Uh, now, obviously, we all use OCI registry for container images, but as you probably have noticed, the industry have turned uh, into using registries uh, for a variety of other artifacts and. Uh, we also caught up on that trend, I would say, quite a bit early and are very uh, excited in how we use the registries and how we uh, deliver some of the software. So let's um, jump in into this last bullet point, layered approach. So Carvel, as I mentioned before, uh, is a toolkit, right? And there's various tools um, and these tools try to follow Unix philosophy. Uh, what I mean by that is we want to have small, sharp tools that know how to help you solve a particular problem and not do anything beyond that, right? And we have a collection of um, tools that help you with uh, uh, configuration building, for example, the, the Kubernetes configuration building. Uh, we have a tool, for example, that allows you to manage Kubernetes resources in bulk as kind of seen as an application. Uh, you know, we have tool that allows you to interact with registries and, you know, do interesting things with, with the assets stored in the registries. Uh, and there's a few other tools. One of the tools um, specifically we'll start with um, is, is CAP CLI. CAP CLI is that tool that allows you to manage multiple resources in bulk, right? Um, you can think of it as kubectl on steroids. Uh, we'll actually, one of the first demos is to actually look at that tool and, and, and you know, deploy something with it. Um, since I've said, you know, different problems should probably be solved at different layers of abstraction. So CAP CLI is really a CLI that you get to use maybe yourself or maybe in your CI system. Uh, but we also thought, well, uh, there's definitely cases where it's much more useful to have an abstraction within Kubernetes that represents the deployment of some configuration to your cluster, right? And that's what AppCR is all about. Uh, it's really meant to describe how do you fetch, configure, and deploy your application to the cluster. Um, the next, oops, oh no, oh, pressing the wrong button. All right, the next layer that we'll actually talk about uh, is uh, two other CRs, package install CR and a package, right? So this is where we get a little bit into uh, maybe more traditional um, thinking around package management, right? So a package CR represents a piece of software at a particular version that, you know, that, that is this concrete thing and a package install is actually uh, an intent to install that piece of software. Now, as you can see over here, we have a package install arrow pointing to the app CR, and that's intentional because we want to reuse the lower level abstractions in our higher levels, right? So we're not throwing away all the useful work that we've done, we're building on top of it. And you as a user can decide which layer you really wanna be at. <clears throat> and, oh my God, keep on pressing the upright arrow. So, all right, the next final uh, top level, at least in our current stack, uh, is package repository. And a package repository is all about delivering a, a set of package CRs to the cluster, right? So similar to a Linux distribution, right? Uh, a repository contains a collection of packages. In our case, a package repository contains a collection of package CRs that could ultimately be installed. Um, so we'll take a look at this entire stack as we go along and uh, see what happens. Let's dig in live. Alrighty, so I'll um, I'll jump over to my terminal here, <clears throat> and I do have a cluster over here um, that's authenticated, uh, and 
I'm using cap CLI to interact with this cluster right now, right? So what I'm saying is let's list all of the applications that we have installed to the system. Now we haven't currently installed anything, so the list is empty. And so if we go ahead and I've prepared a few handy commands to run for ourselves to kind of explore some of the stuff. Um, if we actually go ahead and deploy the sample YAML from, um, from uh, GitHub, um, we'll see that CAP is going to tell us what things we will install with this YAML, right? So the YAML is actually from one of our uh, Carvel uh, simple apps running on Kubernetes. It's a little Go app. Uh, but in our case over here, as you can see, uh, we have a service, a Kubernetes service that's being added, and we also have a, a deployment uh, that's being added. And the deployment is pointing to some image that's been built somewhere. Um, and similar to tools like Terraform, or maybe CloudFormation, uh, you get this little nice diff, right, that tells you what are the exact operations that will take. Now, one of the benefits of using cap is that these are the only operations that will be taken right so you know exactly what would happen to your cluster this gets a little bit interesting uh, of course once you actually start changing the objects not just creating them and deleting them right so let's go ahead and actually press um, confirm and uh, we'll have our app being deployed here and it succeeded pretty quick um, and we can actually inspect what kind of uh, resources got created uh, so here I've used uh, simple app as the name. So we'll say simple app. And uh, we will see that uh, simple app now is composed of uh, two re uh, six resources, right? Deployment and service. That's the stuff that we have put in. And then the Kubernetes cluster also added in the endpoints for the service. And then, you know, of course, the deployment got broken down into the replica set and the pod. Uh, and et cetera. So that, that's, the, that's the basic of CAP, right? Uh, you're able to, for example, go ahead and say, okay, I, I, I no longer want this app on my cluster and you're able to delete it. Um, and you know, it will find all of these resources and get rid of them. Uh, one of the you know, maybe basics uh, around CAP operation is that we're not trying to do anything um, outside of just the basic Kubernetes feature set, right? We're not trying to hide the APIs or anything like that. Uh, for example, the way that CAP knows which resources are associated with this app is really through a label. Uh, so all it's doing is it's generating a unique label and uh, getting that deployed. All right, so CAP CLI, you know, could be used in your CI environments, for example, if, if you're really pushing out the content to your, um, uh, to your cluster, or maybe you are, um, I don't know, maybe you're, for whatever reason, playing locally yourself, right? Um, and gives you ability to converge the set of resources in, you know, in some kind of a um, deterministic manner, right? Rather than trying to hunt down which resources were in a previous version of the thing that you were deploying and removing it and whatnot. Um, so uh, with CAP, of course, you know, so that, that was a simple little example, right? And, you know, we can, of course, CAP is used in production environments to deploy more, uh, you know, serious software. And so, for example, here's an example of um, uh, here's an example of Cert Manager uh, from uh, 161 release from GitHub, uh, and we'll install that real quick as well, uh, just to showcase that you know it's 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 happily deploying things. Uh, it does show you a little progress log telling you what's going on, what kind of resource is getting applied. You know, some resources are getting applied in parallel, some not. We're waiting for some pods to start up and whatnot. Uh, but all in all, all it's trying to do is just uh, deploy, converge, um, make sure that the resources are in a particular state. And we'll go ahead and also delete the same thing. So cap delete dash ACM. <clears throat> Go ahead and say yes. All right, so that was the lowest um, abstraction level that we typically um, start with, right? Uh, very simple. Um, now, in our next example over here, uh, we're actually throwing in a little bit of a, um, a configuration um, uh, challenge, right? So uh, let's take a look at this config, right? So this is the config that we deployed from the GitHub. Uh, and it had a service, it had a deployment, and it had some, you know, environment configuration going on there, uh, and uh, and a particular URL. 
Now, we also have a tool within um, Carvel called YTT. YTT is all about um, changing your data structures that are represented within YAML, right? Uh, via various uh, approaches, right? Some approaches uh, that are allowed is templating, for example. Another approach uh, that's very common is overlaying. And some folks, for example, mix them, right? Because sometimes the overlaying uh, is much more useful for uh, after uh, the um, maybe environment-specific configuration uh, versus maybe templating is useful when you're uh, still kind of a reconfiguring your uh, configuration in the first place, right? So uh, we allow both of the approaches to be, uh, you know, either solely used or mixed together, found it very powerful uh, when dealing with especially large amounts of configuration. So let's uh, grab that and uh, do a little deploy over here. So we'll have, well, actually, let's see. So we'll do a deploy over here <clears throat> and in our case, since we're just updating the simple app that we previously installed, um, uh, it's actually telling us that we're only going to change replicas uh, to, to be set to three. And this is based on that overlay, right? That's saying, hey, we will set replicas on the deployment uh, within you know, the config YAML that it found, right? So it matched this particular object. Uh, and so let's go ahead and say yes. And I think to nobody's surprise, you know, if we go ahead and say, Okay, get pod, right? We'll see that there's three pods now running versus uh, what it was is uh, one pod running before. All right, uh, nothing too complicated, right? Uh, so just scoping the discussion for a second to these two tools, CAP and YTT, right? You get a variety of possible usages, right? You could be doing all kinds of things with, for example, using other tools to generate the YAML, but then doing a CAP deploy, or maybe your actually uh, uh, maybe you actually gen uh, using YTT to generate or modify, let's say upstream configuration, right? If I wanted to tweak something in a cert manager YAML that's been published with YTT and then maybe send that to kubectl or some other tool, for example. Uh, mixing and matching is what kind of a, um, brings the power to some of those tools, right? We're not trying to uh, tell you what is the, uh, what is the entire uh, tool stack that you should be using, right? We're really trying to say, okay, you have a problem on your hands. We have this particular tool that solves this particular problem. <clears throat> okay, so easy so far. All right, let's get a little bit more uh, interesting with, um, with a, maybe a non-CLI option, right? So cap deploy is great. You might be doing it yourself or maybe you're doing it in a CI. That's all cool. Um, some of our users uh, uh, do appreciate a, a GitOps first approach, right? And so for that, we actually uh, have a project called Cap Controller. Cap Controller actually brings uh, several tools together in a fairly opinionated way. Uh, and that's what actually provides that stacking of the app CR to the package install, to the package, and to the package repository. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and install cap controller with cap deploy onto the cluster. <clears throat> and I think we're installing the latest version of cap controller here from GitHub. We'll just go ahead and say yes. You know, of course, you could be using kubectl to do this, but I'm just using cap deploy here. Um, and uh, what we'll do is actually check out what is it uh, doing uh, inside this uh, number three directory. So what does app CR look like? So actually that's not a directory that I wanted to take a look at, which, oh yeah, maybe app CR config map. Oh yeah, that is the directory. <clears throat> so um, app CR is really composed of three pieces, fetch, template, and deploy. Uh, we felt like this is the right amount of balance that allows you to mix and match certain things, right? For example, you might be fetching things from a config map in this case, right? So we have a config map that actually contains a bunch of YAML and an overlay. Um, and you're able to combine it in particular ways. So in this particular case, you can combine it with YTT. Uh, and finally, as a last step, you're doing a cap deploy, right? And so what this app CR is meant to describe is your way of deploying this application. And you can imagine, right, if you have a hundred apps, 
it's very beneficial to have that consistency across all of them, right? They always get deployed, let's say, by AppCR driven through Git, for example. Uh, now, note, we also have a service account over here because AppCR doesn't give you any kind of privileges. You do have to bring your own service account so that the AppCR will use it and actually deploy it. So in our case over here, uh, we have a config YAML that we want to deploy. So let's go ahead and do that, the cap. Uh, so we have a cap control already installed on the cluster. We will actually go ahead and do a delete of simple app because that's where we're going to be installing through AppCR. <clears throat> So that hopefully gets rid of pods real quick. Here it goes. All right. So we only have cap controller now. Uh, and we will go ahead and apply the, um, uh, we'll create a service account here. So I'll actually copy this out over here. We'll create a service account so that our app CR can deploy things. <clears throat> And we're using an ex in this example, of course, uh, default namespace, but you know this is not really namespace specific. And so we'll go ahead and actually deploy our app CR right in a config map to our cluster. Um, and here it goes. So Cap is actually smart enough to wait for app CR to reconcile, and we can actually see that <clears throat> that app CR reconciled pretty quick, and there's some nice some nice status information that's available to you. Uh, we have you know, our spec of how we told uh, AppCR to do things, but we also have the status indicating that, hey, the deploy have succeeded. And note over here, the deploy, that, that, that output may look very familiar. And the reason why it may look very familiar is because AppCR actually internally uses cap deploy to deploy the application, right? So we're building on top of that lower primitive within this higher level. Um, now, you also notice that uh, the fetch step succeeded over here. It, it, it fetched some stuff from a config map, nothing too exciting, right? And finally, you know, the templating step succeeded over here. And we do have this uh, nice little handy inspect output indicating what's been, what's been created. So now, after that app CR has succeeded, you actually get to see via cap that simple app exists here deployed three pods over here happily running, right? Um, and, uh, you know, we can go ahead and, for example, change something inside this config map. Let's say we want to scale it down to four, and we'll go ahead and uh, apply the same. Uh, we'll even make it a little fancy here and show you that that's what we're changing here. We're changing the replicas four, yes. And then the app CR should uh, pick up. Oh, it might have already picked up. So, okay, get pod. Now there's four pods running, right? Uh, all right, so that's the app CR level layer that we've been talking about. And let me flip back to the slide real quick. So we've covered the cap CLI, uh, and then we're also covering right now the app CR. Um, now, let's take a look at the app CR that's a little bit more complicated than what we have, right? So what we had was just, hey, read some stuff, read some content from a config map. but that might be useful for maybe a local tweaking, local development maybe even. You can imagine building little CLIs that, that, uh, that allow you to fill in the config map from your local resources. More on that later maybe beyond the talk. Uh, uh, come talk to us about your use cases in, in the Slack channel. Um, here's, uh, on the other hand, a more complicated app CR uh, that actually quite uh, powerfully captures what most people want, right? So they have a, maybe a Git repository somewhere uh, that contains some configuration and they want to be able to munch this configuration a little bit. Uh, and then finally they want to deploy it, right? So same exact steps. In this case though, we're only fetching from Git. We're doing a little bit of YTT massaging for, uh, for that configuration we're deploying this, right? So let's go ahead and again, um, we'll do, uh, Cap delete. Actually, let's do a just copy paste this. We'll just do this here. <clears throat> oh, actually, this is. Uh, uh, oh yeah, that's true. Okay, so you can actually see that it's changing from inline to Git. It's changing YTT from doing nothing to, for example, including a particular set of directories within what it fetched. Uh, and then it's actually getting rid of this config map because uh, there's no need for it. 
<clears throat> and so that happened awfully fast, but here it is reconciled. We can actually take a look at this. Um, and as you can actually see, because we're fetching from Git this time, there is actually a little bit of handy information that's being included over here. We're actually showing what is the, um, what is the commit that it fetched. Uh, and uh, you know, here you can actually see that it converged based on the changes, right? So previously, this, our config map was containing, uh, I guess, a deployment and a service. And after it's been fetching the stuff from the actual Git repository, there's been a little bit of changes. And you can actually configure AppCR to show you the exact diff for it, similar how we're doing locally. Uh, but at least in this case, it's it's not it's not configured to do it. Uh, and then we also have the little inspect over here. So back to CapLS here, you can see we're back to uh, back to AppCTRL being now managed by the by the Git source. <clears throat> okay, so that's a Git repo with some YAML and uh, you know nothing nothing too exciting. Uh, because AppCR is really somewhat agnostic, right, to the content that it's fetching, right? Um, and, and the split between fetching, templating, and deploying uh, is really this powerful uh, way of thinking about stuff, right? We can do all kinds of other things that, you know, a lot of the common use cases uh, call for, right? So here we're fetching from a Bitnami chart Git repository at a particular reference. Uh, we're actually saying let's uh, let's do a little bit of Helm templating this particular nginx values uh, and this chart I guess uh, supports a configuration of uh, nginx server um, and then we're also on top of that so not just we did the Helm template but on top of that we're also doing YTT overlay that allows us to change something that is not configurable in that chart so we are removing external traffic policy. Um, in this case, and actually setting the type cluster IP on this particular service, right? Uh, and so this is a little Nginx uh, app CR, and let's actually go ahead and grab that and deploy that. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and say, so we are creating the Nginx app CR, uh, we are deleting our uh, simple app because I guess we don't need it anymore in this config. Uh, and we're also applying the Nginx values. So let's go ahead and say yes to that. <clears throat> so that may take a little bit uh, since it's going to, you know, deploy the resources to the cluster, fetch the images, et cetera. Uh, you can actually see, um, well, not quick enough, I guess. <laughs> uh, you can actually see uh incremental output uh as things progress right so uh we don't just update the status at the end we actually update the status as um uh, as the app cr reconciliation progresses uh and uh, as you can see over here uh the nginx helm chart here was uh it had a deployment and a service and and the config map i guess nginx server server block uh, and ultimately deployed that, and supposedly there is some Nginx running here. Uh, yep, there's an Nginx pod running inside the default namespace where I'm installing it. Um, so that's that kind of showcases right the power that you can really you know we could actually be uh, within AppCR you know there's like different uh, ways of fetch things, and so you could be using a Helm chart uh, directly to fetch it from the Helm repository, or could you be using Git? Um, or you can actually be doing uh, something that we've been uh, doing at VMware uh, more recently is also putting in configuration into the OCI registry and actually fetching the configuration uh, from what we call bundles from the OCI registry. But the greater point here is that we're able to mix and match those things within AppCR and that gives tremendous flexibility. Actually, one thing um, that recently somebody was uh, was really appreciative of is the feature of being able to uh, decrypt uh, certain configuration via SOPs uh, as part of the templating section. So we do have uh, we do have a SOPs configuration that you can provide over here uh, to, for example, use the age uh, backend uh, to decrypt some of the configuration that might be encrypted in your Git repository. Uh, and in theory, uh, you know, if you haven't noticed here, 
fetch is an array, so you could actually be fetching multiple things. So one of those things could, for example, be your encrypted uh, you know, credentials maybe, right? If that's how you manage your credentials in a production, right? Um, so a lot of the flexibility here because a lot of people have different choices made for their production environments, for their dev environments, et cetera. All right, so let's keep on going here. So the next example that we got going on uh, is an app CR that actually uses this concept of an image package bundle. And so what exactly are these image package bundles? Well, to break that down a little bit more, maybe in a more visual way, uh, let's actually look at this slide over here. Uh, I'm not going to press the present mode because it's a little bit, uh, <laughs> uh, don't see my screen, so it's, uh, it's a little bit terrifying. Uh, so we'll, um, we'll break this concept of a bundle into a few things, right? So to deploy something to Kubernetes, you need some configuration, right? Now, that configuration may come in different types of formats. For example, it might be a configuration that's a plain YAML manifest, right? It might be, you know, Helm template. It might be a, a YTT template. Maybe it's some new templating mechanisms that, you know, have recently been invented, right? Um, now, previously I've mentioned that similar to uh, the rest of the industry, there's a recent trend that uh, let's use registry uh, because it's such a common API now that's available everywhere, let's use a registry to actually store content that's not directly container images. So we've we've started doing that quite a bit ago uh, with this tool called Image Package. And one of the things that we've kind of uh, organically grew within Image Package is this concept of a bundle. We want to be able uh, to not, not just to store the configuration of something, but we also want to be able to reference other OCI uh, artifacts uh, so that we can build up a graph of the software. And so this image kind of tries to showcase that, right? So you may have some, let's say YAML configuration file two, YAML file three YAML, but we also have this dot image package images YAML that references this other images that are being, let's say referenced by this file two and file three YAMLs, right? Now we do have another tool that actually easily is able to evaluate like here are the X number of images that you've been using and then actually create the images YAML for you. Uh, but the general concept of being able to build up this graph is quite powerful. Um, what's even more powerful about this is that when we do this reference to another image, it could in theory be another bundle, right? So you can kind of see how we're building up this graph and image package itself doesn't actually have an opinion what's inside those images. It doesn't even know. Right, it just knows how to deal with OCI registry references. Now, these OCI registry references don't even have to be in the same registry, right? You know, if you've seen, for example, um, you know, you may want to push your configuration up into your registry, but that configuration is actually pointing to the other registries. Uh, maybe something to you know in GCR or Docker Hub, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Because I don't know, depend depending on your level of uh, uh, confidence with some of the external assets, right? You might be just consuming the external assets directly versus like trying to rebuild them yourself directly, right? So <clears throat> how does this actually look like when somebody is building image package bundles, right? Well, it actually looks very close to what you typically do with, uh, with Docker commands, right? So you have this image package push that takes a reference uh, and you also get to specify uh, the content of the bundle, right? And so inside this my bundle directory, you typically would have that image package bundle subdirectory that contains a little bit of metadata and the content that you want to put in there. Now, one of the things that you could be doing now, now that you have this graph of the software is you can actually take that graph of software and move that over to a different registry. As for example, a lot of users who really appreciate this feature are the users who want to have uh, an air gapped environment, right? Uh, so they're able to say image package copy this bundle to a tarball. And so that it recursively grabs everything that you ever need and then brings that over to the other registry of your choice, where, wherever you import your tarball that contains, let's say, 100 images. And then you're able to plug that back in into, let's say, cap controller. Or I mean, or in theory, you may have entirely different set of tooling that, you know, that, that you're using for deployment or something like that, right? Um, 
So that's that, that's that that's where it gets interesting, right? Once you have this graph, you can do cool things around it. Now, more recently, we actually added uh, functionality to also grab the cosine signatures. Um, we, uh, you know, we know the entire graph, and so that means that we can actually check if for each one of the nodes in the graph is there an associated signature or multiple signatures, right? Uh, we can also start bringing in things like as bonds and um, you know attestations right uh, it's really you know once you have the graph you can do all kinds of additional things that you know production system for example may, may, may want to take advantage of um, and finally you know once you've carried that all maybe to your own registry or maybe you've you know kept the bundle in the original location you know you can always pull it unpack it into a directory this just unpacks the contents of the bundle directly like doesn't actually bring over all the referenced images or anything like that but it does give you a list of referenced images that you can take advantage of and you know put it in into you know consume it via you know some other system and actually use those references right now because we are requiring everything to be digest base uh, digest um, referenced right we have that guarantee that your bundle digest represents the entire graph that it captured right so again you can you can, for example, cosign the bundle itself, right? And then uh, that that effectively translates into the confidence that you're bringing over the entire thing, uh, and it's all exactly the same digest. So that's a little bit of image package. And so where does that leave us, right? So in our example over here, we're actually using image package bundle. I think this is one of the images that we use in um, uh, in our end-to-end -end, uh, test suite for cap controller. Uh, but you're able to download this bundle. Uh, and then, you know, run some configuration munging on it. Uh, KBuild is the little tool that actually inserts the new updated references. And then finally, uh, you do the deploy here, right? Uh, and so if we want to actually uh, apply that, so we'll uh, actually, again, I'll copy, I'll copy this over here. <clears throat> and so as you can see over here, we're, we're adding our app CR that, uh, uh, that uses the image package bundle. We're actually deleting, in this case, the Nginx related bits because I guess this example no longer needs it. Um, and so uh, first step, right, fetching, we will take advantage of image package pool, grab the bundle and deploy it. And you can actually see it here again. Nothing too exciting again. We're back to, uh, we're back to our deployed applications pretty quickly. <clears throat> um, so that's how you would use a bundle. Now, what's interesting about OCI registries is they do give you this, you know, location where you can find various things, right? And so once you get to that, you can get a little bit fancy with, for example, your tags, right? So here we're saying use the particular tag, right? Now, we would also, for example, if you if you really wanted to do this for a production, we would probably do something like, you know, K-build through it and actually grab uh, and, and have your YAML have the digest, right, to, to be referenced to that exact image. However, in this example, we're saying, you know what? We don't want to know which tag is going to get picked, which image is going to get picked. Uh, it will happen automatically based on this tag selection uh, policy, right? So in, in here, we have Semver as the way to decide what to fetch. And so within this uh, uh, OCI registry repository, there's a few tags. Uh, I think this one was using V1. This one will most likely pick V2 because I think that's what it is. And so let's go ahead and actually uh, apply that as well. So we'll say, I think it's that. And so here we're changing to the tag selection. Uh, we're also throwing in some YTT stuff, not that it's really necessary, but um, so here it goes. It goes in and image package will talk to the registry, will figure out uh, what's going on, which, which is the tag you want. And so if we look at the app status, we will actually see what happened here. So you can actually see that it picked tag VO. Now by default, actually, we don't uh, pick pre-release versions, right? Because pre-releases are not necessarily maybe production, man. However, you could, uh, you could add a little bit more a configuration over here that, for example, says include the pre-releases, uh, or maybe even even uh, one of my favorite features, maybe include certain pre-releases that have, let's say, RC in them, right? 
And so that kind of acts as a, a way for you to filter out like what what do you actually want your environment to be consuming, right? And in different types of environments, you might be consuming sl slightly different artifacts, right? All right, so that was an example of how we use uh, more flexible fetching, right, to determine what you actually want to install, right? Um, <clears throat> so, so far, we've gone through the examples of CAP CLI doing the deploy directly. You are responsible for running the CAP deploy, right, wherever you are, right? Uh, We've looked at AppCR that allows you to explicitly say concretely how to deploy, how to fetch template and deploy your application, right? And Cap Controller will facilitate that continuously. Um, oh, and by the way, maybe I haven't made that uh, clear. Uh, sorry, this is this is something that's been uh, uh, that's maybe been uh, not talked about. Is that the AppCR deployment process happens continuously. It's actually, for AppCRs, uh, the default is fairly short. It's, it's, I think it's about 30 seconds or something like that, right? So this, this loop effectively is happening all the time. Now, there's definitely a few optimizations to react to the system in various ways more uh, quickly, but at the least, right, there is that reconciliation period happening. Uh, and so if your artifact is changing, right, like you might be pointing to an origin develop here, right? An origin develop keeps on changing. Cap control will pick up those changes and redeploy them, right? At that, you know, at that time. Uh, all right, so AppCR, you get to specify concretely how to deploy something. Now, in a higher level block, right? If we go back to our, uh, to our slides over here, the next layer of uh, this notion of a package install and package CR. Well, sometimes, right, sometimes users don't want to actually decide how to deploy something, right? They don't know. Uh, maybe some other team is responsible for determining that. Maybe somehow they receive that piece of software. Uh, so they want to not worry about it, right? And so that's exactly what package CR is about. Let me just kind of uh, focus on uh, this particular uh, CR. So we have Kind package CR, right? Um, it has a name, ref name here, and it has a version, right? So this is what's, um, uh, you can think of it similar to how CRDs have a fully qualified name, right? We expect each package to also have a fully qualified name, right? So that there's no funky, maybe aliasing conflicts going on and whatnot. And we also want uh, a version to be provided, right? Now, this two pieces of information is, is actually this this section and this section is what's required in package CR. Everything else is optional. Uh, obviously, it's good to provide all kinds of useful metadata to uh, whoever is consuming this package CRs. But for our example here, really the focus is the ref name, the version, and the template section. Now, the template section is actually app CR type embedded in, right? So this is a similar pattern how the deployment in Kubernetes embeds, for example, a, a pod spec, right? Um, so this is exactly the same thing. And this is ultimately how this, uh, how it gets translated is that package install that operates on the package CR that reads it in, right, through a reference, it will create that app CR based on this template, right? So all of the functionality that you might have been using directly with app CR, right, could be in theory used here, right? Now, for our own usage, we have mostly stuck with image package bundles because they provide you that nice guarantee of immutability, especially when pointed through digests, right? But you may, for whatever reason, want to hide uh, what a piece of software, uh, how the piece of software is actually being installed. And maybe that piece of software is being installed from a Git repository at a particular Git shower or something like that, right? Or maybe just continuously changing, right? Um, so that's the package CR, right? And once it gets loaded into the system, right, you can now use package install to install it based on a ref name, based on a particular version selection. Now, no, the version selection kind of sounds like that tag selection that I previously mentioned in the app CR. Well, it's actually backed by the same little struct. And what that allows you to do ultimately is allows you to specify the policy of which version do you want to select, right? And so because the package CRs are actually uh, require you to have versions to be Semver format, uh, you get to potentially put in some interesting constraints here that have your system automatically evaluate and kind of maybe keep things updated, 
continuously, right? And so let's actually go ahead and install this package CR uh, to our cluster over here. So we'll grab that and uh, uh, we'll do, oops, unauthorized. Well, that's unfortunate. I think my session expired for the cluster. Let me stop sharing for a second. Let me real quickly reload my token here. Apologies for the little pause, maybe a coffee break for anybody watching. Um, and uh, let me grab the appropriate configuration here. <clears throat> uh, it's gonna be one second. Just keeping it real with the live, live demos. That's right. I was kind of, you know, I, I did the refresh my tokens and whatnot uh, right before, but I wasn't actually sure how long and when they expire. So that was a calculated bet that hopefully maybe they last an hour, but I guess they last a little less. Uh, all right. So uh, looks like looks like I'm back. So let me screen share again. All right. Hopefully we're back. So. <clears throat> As I was saying, we're going to run the cap deploy. And here it goes again. All right, so here what we're doing is we're adding a package CR to the cluster. We have an app over here and we have a package install. Uh, and in fact, what's actually going to get a little funky here is that both package install and app, they're called simple app here. And so let's go ahead and actually still go for it. but. Because package install installs the app, it might get a little uh, <laughs> confused, if you will. So let's uh, let's see what's going on over here. So, oops. Um, so, uh, so we have. <clears throat> All right, I guess it finished. All right, and so uh, still was pretty quick. We have the app, uh, that simple app, and we also now have a package install. Oops, is it not package install like that? I actually don't recall what it's supposed to, oh, it must be package install. Yeah, uh, the shortcut is, uh, the, the the short name is package and I've been using it uh, for, for, for long enough to remember the, uh, to forget the long name. All right, so we have a version two that's been installed and we have the app that ultimately the package install created as a result of this package CR. Now we also have package uh, record here, right? That's the thing that we imported, version two. Uh, here is it in its YAML shape and form. Uh, and it actually tells you uh, all the information that we saw in the YAML. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention was uh, the little section over here in the package YAML that I hidden away is the little value schema. So you can actually know what potentially your package is exposing as configuration. We'll get to that, I think, in a moment. Um, so, uh, package install successfully installed version two. Sounds great. Nothing fancy again. Uh, let's move on maybe to the next example then. So in the next example, <clears throat> what we have here is the following. So the package install can be configured with certain values. And unfortunately, I think this, this example doesn't actually showcase the values that it's, uh, uh how it's configuring, let's say maybe this one. Yeah. So. Here's an example of, for example, um, package install allows you to specify certain values and these values are referenced through a secret and in, inside the secret, right, you could be dropping in, you know, that configuration. So this is very, you know, exactly the same actually as the app CR. In fact, this secret reference will make it down into the app CR that gets created. Now, on top of that, some things are not configurable true values, right? Like, well, somebody authored some software and they just don't have, uh, they just don't have a certain configuration of that you really need in your environment, right? Uh, that's ultimately how we actually, you know, why YTT, for example, includes templating and overlaying, because we do see that 80-20 uh, match between 80% of templating, let's say, and 20% of overlaying, right? Especially in production environments where with different kind of ways of, of configuring things. So in this example, we're saying package install, please use uh, this secret as an additional overlay on top of this package so that by the time it gets installed, things get modified a little bit. So um, in this case, we're actually say, setting replica five in our overlay. And right now there's only three pods. So if we go ahead and I think again, I have 
real handy copy paste um, so I'm cheating a little bit over here I'm, I'm using this dash P um, dash P flag and what that means is that actually uh, don't try to delete anything only do the create or update actions which is handy if you're just kind of iterating on stuff and maybe you don't want to provide the entirety of the config every single time and so as you can see over here the diff is uh, add the little overlay um, uh, on the package install. Uh, and uh, we actually have, well, our secret is hidden away from us because who knows, maybe it's sensitive information. Uh, but uh, the overlay YAML uh, includes, uh, you know, setting to five replicas. And so if we go ahead and uh, cap deploy this, uh, hopefully a few seconds later, we can see that now there is five pods instead of three pods, right? So our overlay is actually modifying uh, our overlay is modifying the underlying package in a particular way, right? So this is a really great way to adopt something from, let's say, upstream, right? But you don't necessarily have, um, you know, ability to modify it, and you don't want to fork it. You don't want to, you know, do something uh, special just for yourself, right? So you get to use the overlay to override uh, and add in your opinions. All right, so. Uh, Here's another example, package install of Nginx. Um, it's not that exciting, I would say, since we've already seen AppCR taking advantage of that Nginx. So if you actually look at the package YAML, uh, you can actually see that this is a straight copy of that AppCR, put it in, in here, wrapped in a package CR. We give it a name, Nginx test carvel.dev version one, right? And in package install, you're saying, I'd like to install version one of Nginx test carvel dev. Right, and you're providing those values. So given the time, we're, I think, running a little low here. I'm just going to uh, skip over this example and maybe jump uh, straight through uh, this uh, example of package repository, our highest layer. So in our picture over here, our highest layer was package repository. And maybe you can't really argue that it's a layer on top. It's more of a wrapper. Uh, since a lot of, let's say, users might be consuming a lot of versions of the software, right? How do you distribute your package CRs, right? Well, you could definitely throw it in into, let's say, uh, an image package bundle or a Git repository and have another app CR that keeps on updating your cluster. Totally uh, valid way of using it. But we figured uh, let's actually add a higher level concept package repository that allows us to specify where is this repository uh, located through you know, the fetch section, right? and ultimately being able to install things from that package repository, right? So an example of this would be, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and uh, delete our app over here. <clears throat> so this is deleting the package install, the package, the overlay. So we'll just go to kind of a clean, nice uh, world here. <clears throat> So your goes finished. So if we go ahead and say cap ls, nothing here, right? We only have cap controller installed. And so we'll go ahead and apply the step nine over here. Step nine, here it goes. Actually, that's a step eight. We get to step nine. So we have a package repository and a package install. And we go ahead and say yes, right? And what would happen, oops. What will happen is that if we look inside our cluster, the package repository brought this three package CRs of different versions, right? And our package install actually decided, okay, I'd like to actually install version one. Now, there's actually a few variations I put in here for just the sake of uh, entertainment here. So this is how you specify an explicit version, but you may actually specify, just give me the latest thing, right? We're not specifying any constraints, right? And so in this case, the latest thing would have been 2.0, right, versus 1.0 that I explicitly selected. And remember, I said that we don't actually do RC uh, or we don't do pre-release builds, right? And so minus RC is the pre-release build. And so you could actually enable it and say, okay, well, actually it gets me the latest uh, any build, uh, RC or not, right? So that's that. Uh, one thing maybe worth mentioning real quick, um, really running out of time is, okay, well, Package repositories, right? Well, who's creating these package repositories? Well, recently, um, uh, one of the teams within VMware Tanzu actually uh, made a 
uh, uh, opened up an open source project called Tanzu Community Edition, right? And so an example of uh, a, a real package repository uh, comes from uh, folks, uh, uh, from, from those folks over there. A really great job at, uh, um, at uh, making that all happen. So if we go ahead and say uh, tc-f, and I think it's 9.1 tce, tce yaml, I'll just go ahead and add this repository here real quick. So we'll go ahead and say yes. And give it a few seconds here. <clears throat> and so previously, we only had this set of packages. Right now, if we go ahead and say, show me the packages inside this namespace, we got lots of different packages, right? Now, as you can see here, uh, we actually have multiple versions of Cert Manager that the TC community has uh, uh, included in. Uh, and you can actually see package metadata, which is kind of a more combined view. It doesn't have any versions or anything, just the package names. Uh, and so you can see we have cert manager, contour, et cetera, et cetera, right? But this is just an example, right? And in addition to our other repo that brings in some other packages, you know, from, from our earlier examples. Um, I'm not going to go and uh, do maybe uh, an install of cert manager. I think uh, you all got the point already that it just all it is is a standard now API within Kubernetes package install something, right? And it's done. Um, so we'll, um, uh, we'll maybe get back to the window here. So the last slide I had was, you know, uh, please join us in the Carvel Slack. We love the discussions. We want to hear your feedback. We want to hear your ideas. Carvel Dev is a, also a good starting point to find out more about all these Carvel tools. Uh, and do, do tell us the suggestions of how we can improve any of this stuff. What are your use cases and how we can be helping you potentially solve those use cases. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, I guess, uh, flip over to the, to the chat over here and uh, see any questions here that might be worth calling out. And by the way, if, if anybody wants to discuss their questions further, uh, jump in uh jump into the carvel slack we can we can discuss there too uh so what do we have here so hello from slovakia hello from brazil hello all hey hey all to you too um hello from prem is it prem or or is it prem prem from france uh just to level set package management with case that will be discussed here is fully upstream compatible not vmware tanzu specific yes absolutely it's all oss uh, it just happens to live within a VMware Tanzu uh, GitHub organization, but it is a, just like all the other projects, Contour, you know, Valero, they're all open source. Uh, anything uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can take to, uh, uh, to use yourself. Um, and that's been already replied. <laughs> Any insight on the difference between Argo CD and CAP? Well, CAP CLI is a CLI, right? That allows you to do that deployment. So it's a little different in the sense that Argo CD is a system to, to it's a higher level system, right? So arguably one would wanna compare Argo CD and CAP controller. Uh, that goes a little bit into, we feel like uh, the feature set that we have uh, and the way that the APIs are designed is more Kubernetes centric rather than Argo CD. And we also like the lading that we've got going on uh, on top of the CAP CLI, the app CRs, the packages, et cetera. So, uh, that's that's our take on it, um, and uh, and possibly with Helm and customize huge topic. <laughs> uh, we we do have some notes in uh, in the YTT documentation how we feel like YTT is comparing to some of them. Uh, are these atomic operations? Can we add custom template engines tools? Uh, so some folks try to extend a little bit. We do want to work on out of the box extensibility a little bit more, but we haven't had the chance to actually collect more feedback from a community. Do come over and uh, uh, tell us uh, from, uh, uh, tell us in the Slack channel, uh, you know, what kind of, what kind of tools you would want to extend? What kind of, what kind of integrations would you look uh, forward to? Or maybe how would you want to extend those things? Oh, and by the way, I think I, I realized your name was uh, Prem now. That wasn't the location, so hello. <laughs> um, all right, uh, we had a need for, oops, uh, something. Uh, uh, hey, Scott, packaging is amazing. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, 
VMware TCA supports Carvel Pi. I, I have no idea about VMware TCA, but uh, uh, I'm sure we can find out that answer for you. Um, we have a need for the combination of customizing SOPs. Great to see you're considering it. Yes, I think, you know, SOPs, SOPs we got the integration for already. Customized, we don't have it yet, but we'd definitely like to hear the feedback of how you all, you know, would like to use it, what kind of features. Customized has, does have a lot of features, and there's definitely some considerations in how it's best to expose those features, but otherwise, we're open to ideas. All right, so I'll leave it, I'll leave it at that. Uh, come by to Carvel channel. Uh, glad you all could make it, and uh, thank you for, for joining. Thank you so much, Dimitri, and thank you everyone for joining. We had a great turnout today. Everything will be online shortly, as well as the slide deck, and um, catch us again next week for another round of live webinars and live streams. And thanks again. Thank you.